In this video, I interview best-selling author and founder of Smart Passive Income, Pat Flynn, and we talk about how to make money with affiliate marketing, talking about the products you're probably already using, the one thing you need to do if you launch your own product to ensure it won't fail, and the tool Pat would use to stay safe during a zombie apocalypse. Coming up. This video is brought to you by LearnVideo.Live, a one-hour online masterclass on how to grow a highly influential and profitable YouTube channel this year. On this free training, you'll learn the proven strategies and current best practices for growing your subscribers and creating passive income with YouTube. To register for free, just go to LearnVideo.Live. Hey, what's up guys, Sean here with Video Influencers. Hope you build your influence, income, and impact with online video. And I'm super pumped to be sitting with Pat Flynn. How's it going? Good man, stoked to be here, thank you. Super pumped to have you on the show. Now Pat is a uh, podcaster, really is what he's known for. Over 55 million downloads across his shows. The creator of Smart Passive Income, best-selling author. He actually started a YouTube channel back in 2009 and is now doing some really cool things with video. And in this video we're talking about affiliate marketing and is some of the new stuff he's doing with YouTube tactically. So it's gonna be a rad episode. But Pat, take us back for people maybe that are just meeting you or maybe don't know your story and your journey of uh, how you got to where you are today, building your influence and everything that you're doing. Yeah, it's kind of a crazy story. You know, I went to school for architecture and that, that was my whole life. Like I was born and I started playing with Legos like the next day. Um, and I wanted to be a world famous architect. Um, but in 2008, when the recession happened in the US, um, I had this amazing job and then the next day I didn't have it. So I got let go. And it was kind of a depressing time for me. I had just proposed to my girlfriend and we were supposed to get married and it was just all bad. Like everything was, was, was not going the way I wanted it to. But I actually discovered podcasts at that time, and on a particular podcast I was listening to, I heard about this thing called internet business. And I actually listened to an interview about a guy who was helping people pass an exam called the project management exam. And I was like, wait, I took a lot of exams on my way to become an architect. And one in particular just was terrible, and I had the worst experience with it, and I know I could probably help other people do that too. So to make a long story short, I built a website, uh, greenexamacademy.com, and I sold an ebook for $19.95. And the first month it launched uh, in October of 2008, it had made $7,908.55. Wow. And it was just mind blowing. Like, first of all, I thought I had done something like illegal. I was like, this is, this is not real. Yeah. I can't believe this is happening. To like see that inside of your like merchant account. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was two and a half times what I was making as an architect. And I was just like, this, this can't be real. Number two, I was like, everybody's gonna ask for a refund. Like, I'm not even an expert in this. I just was somebody who put this stuff, this stuff together. But it was because I just knew a little bit more and I had that experience taking that exam. I mean, people saw me as an expert. And then I, and then I started to look at my analytics and I was being shared on the United States Green Building Council website and all these chapter websites around the world. And that's how I got all my traffic. And it was because I was just giving all that information away and also selling a book on top of it. Then I sold some practice exams and some, some courses and, and that stuff. And, and, and that just exploded. I mean, I made over $200,000 from that ebook yeah. uh, and essentially the content in there. But I knew that I wanted to share how I did all that. Uh, and some of my coworkers who also got laid off were like, how did you even survive? And I said, well, I'll show you. So I built this website called Smart Passive Income. And the passive income part came as a result of getting inspired by Tim Ferriss, yeah. right? So his book, The 4-Hour Workweek, came out just a, a year prior. And it was all about like creating systems of automation, businesses that could run on their own, right? Yeah. And so it literally, I built my business in the exact same way that he was teaching. I could wake up the next morning and there was more money in my PayPal account, which is just insane. But when you think about it, when you have an online store, you have a business that's open 24 seven, 365, yeah. and your storefront's there for anybody who needs that information. And I was giving them the information uh, that they needed. And then I decided on Smart Passive Income because when I was doing research on internet business, all I could find were like these scammers. Mm. Like, here are the top 10 tips to help you succeed. Here are the first three, you gotta pay for the rest. And yeah. I was like, this isn't like, Everybody needs to know this stuff. So I just decided to give everything away for free. I shared everything, including how much money I was making and where it was all coming from, how many sales I was making, stuff I wish I had done differently, things that I was trying. I was building new businesses then eventually. I built a, a website. I have the number one security guard training website wow. in the world. I built a website to help people start a food truck. All this random stuff, just to kind of experiment and see what would happen. And now those things, I haven't touched those things for years and they still continue to bring in income every month. But now, Smart Passive Income, has grown quite a bit, and I've utilized affiliate marketing, which I know we're gonna talk about, uh, to generate over $3 million 
without even my own product, yeah. but by recommending stuff that I know would be helpful for people. Um, and now I'm speaking, I have books, and, and, and the greatest part of, about all this is it's not the money, right? The money's great, obviously, but I got two young kids, uh, an eight-year-old boy and a five-year-old daughter, and I can walk to school with my wife every single day and, yeah. and, pick up, and drop them off and pick them up, and we're like the only ones at school who do that. I can, we just take random trips when we, you know, we're up by Disneyland, so we just go and, you know, spend a couple days there. Yeah. Because we can, you know, it's the freedom and the flexibility that comes with building an actual business in such a way that you can automate things and take mini breaks every once in a while. Yeah. But I will say, like, a lot of you are like, smart passive income, like, aren't you one of those scammers? <laughs> sure. People hear that and they're like, this isn't real. None of this happened overnight. This stuff is hard. It takes work, it takes patience just like on YouTube. and uh, But if you help and serve other people, I mean, you will be rewarded for it. And then here we are today, I get to talk to one of my heroes as I'm starting to venture into YouTube now. So uh, thank you again for the opportunity to share what I can. Absolutely, and love your story and your journey. And um, I'm actually maybe excited to talk a little bit about products too, because I think that's an opportunity to generate smart passive income. Um, because you made an ebook first. Yeah. That was like the first thing you did and it generated that initial income. And so that's exciting. But what's cool about affiliate marketing, and we've talked a little bit here on Video Influencers, but not even close to the depth you've done and the, the income you've generated just from affiliate marketing is so cool. One of my favorite things about it is even if you you know you write an ebook, I don't know what to say yet, or you know create a digital course, I'm not sure what to do yet. The cool thing about affiliate marketing is you don't have to create the product; you can just uh, jump on something that's already happening and generate some income in the middle there. What's kind of the 101 of affiliate marketing for those who maybe haven't started that you've learned um, when it comes to that? Well, you have this audience. It could be big, it could be small, it doesn't matter. They come to you for advice. They come to you for help. Right? That's your audience. There are products in the market that they're already buying, that already exist, that can help serve them in whatever goal you're helping them achieve. You are the person to marry those two together, the audience and the product. And when you do that, those companies will reward you for that. Yeah. It's at no extra cost to the people buying, and it becomes almost a reward for you for being the one to share that recommendation. Um, the, there's, there, uh, affiliate marketing is my jam. I love this. So I, I'm, I'm thankful to share this, especially for YouTubers who, you know, I'm, I'm diving deep into YouTube, right? And I'm seeing everybody super focused on the AdSense dollars and the views and stuff and complaining that they only have a thousand subscribers when you have a thousand human beings right. who are listening to you. Tell them what would be helpful. And if there's an affiliate program tied to that or a referral program, I mean, you can be rewarded for that. Yeah. I mean, I, I know some people who have channels that are just a thousand, you know, and podcasts that just have a thousand subscribers, but they're killing it because mm -hmm. they are working so hard to find the best stuff for them. And so that's lesson number one. You want to make sure the products that you recommend to your audience are legit, right? And preferably ones that you've used before, because especially for you YouTubers, I mean, you guys have a huge advantage. Yeah. Because when I teach affiliate marketing, I say, go create a demo, show people that product, bring them on the inside, right? Like how popular are these unboxing videos, right? Yeah. Unbox therapy, et cetera. Yep. I teach people to unbox these products that they're recommending. Because when you have your own product, right, normally you would share everything that's inside, right? Yeah. When you're selling it. But for whatever reason, when people recommend other products, they just go, oh, here's a link, go check it out. They don't go deep into it as if they own that product themselves. That's good. And that's the approach I, I want you to take. It's almost as if you own these products yourself, even to the point that you would potentially offer support for those products too. So when a person comes to you and they're like, ah, I don't know about that product, but you know what? He's recommending it, I trust him, and he's also saying that if I have any questions, like I have somebody to go to, yeah. well, totally, like, it's okay, powerful. I'll do it, I'll do it, right? Because I trust him. Now it takes a little bit of time to earn that trust, right? But I think by seeing what you're gonna get before you buy it, you're more likely to trust you know, what's gonna happen after you make that purchase. So using that product yourself is preferable because then you can share your own experience with it. If, you, if there's any proof as a result of using this product, um, definitely share that too. Uh, in addition to that, you know, just working people through some of the harder parts of it too. Like some of the products I recommend are software products that are very difficult to use. But if I can make a person's life easier as soon as they get in there, yeah. well, A, I've taught them something. I've provided value and B, if they're going to want that thing, well, they're going to most likely go through my affiliate link. Yeah. Um, and there, there, there's, I mean, there's so many things we could talk about here. Um, I think you can even get, so, so there's two kinds of affiliate marketing, right? Passive affiliate marketing and active affiliate marketing. Passive affiliate marketing, if you have any sort of website or, or, or home where you bring your people back to, I think having things like a resource page, so all the equipment, like just on Think Media, right? Like yeah. you have a list of equipment that you recommend for people at certain levels, right? Yep. That's super useful, yeah. right? And if I see that list and I'm interested in, in video equipment, like I'm gonna go through those links just because 
A, you helped me. Yeah. And hopefully you're even sharing with people that, hey, these are affiliate links. And you know, a lot of people ask, you know, should I be honest and let them know that I'm making money from this recommendation? 100% yes. Absolutely, yeah. For a couple reasons. Number one, if you're in the US at least, the FTC regulations say that you need to do that. Yeah. You need to disclose that. But number two, I do that anyway, because if I'm giving value, people will want to find ways to give value back, right? And sometimes they can't buy a product from you or sometimes it's just simply a share, but if they want that product and they know that they're gonna help you out by going through that link, they're gonna be more likely to do that, Yeah. right? So, so there, let me ask you about, uh, about practically and maybe some of your favorite students, people that follow you in your community, um, what affiliate programs are there and what kind of like percentages can you earn? Now, my story and a lot of people, video influencers have heard this, that the way we were able to go full time on YouTube was actually YouTube and affiliate marketing, not even YouTube ads, we ignored them. Even when we were able to go full time with under 20,000 subscribers, with about 16,000 yeah, subscribers. That's awesome. So it's like, you know, that's a lot, but still so small because we think you need a million, 100,000, 50,000, you don't because we could earn so much more with affiliate marketing than YouTube ads. Um, Amazon Associates is definitely a really big one, right? And But there, you can earn between four to 10% yeah, typically which is not at most. a lot, but if you have a lot of volume, that's great. If you have a lot of volume, and that's kind of what we did. And if you're recommending those things anyway, you might as well, right? Yeah. Like I recommend a lot of books, and yeah. I make a dollar here and there, but it's a good know, point. That adds so, up. what are some of the other ones? Because sometimes it's not just Amazon, and it's not. There's a lot of. You mentioned some software. What are some unique and different affiliate programs, and even some of the possibilities that are a little bit out of the box? Yeah. So, what I would recommend is just consider all the things that you use, everything: software, tools, coaching programs, any any lessons that you take from anybody. Um, you would be surprised to learn that a lot of them have partner programs and, and referral programs. Uh, you sometimes see it listed on their website, like if you scroll to the bottom of a website for a particular tool, you might see partner program or referral program. It's not always the case though. Sometimes you have to go and ask. Mm. Hey, you know, I'm a user of your product, I absolutely love it. I have this audience who would also love it. Instead of just saying, hey, can you pay me $500 to get on my channel? You can say, hey, can we work out a deal where for every person I get to be a customer, you know, I get a percentage. And those percentages can, range pretty high actually. What are some examples? So I mean I, I promote products where I earn $150 every customer. Wow. And it's a product that you know it's only 10 bucks to sign up for per month but they're banking on that they can keep that customer on for yeah. years right so it's worth it to them to pay me 150 bucks for that and that's you know uh, that particular example is like a domain and hosting sure. you know, thing which is the first step and that's another tip what's the first step that your audience needs to take is there a product that you can recommend to go mm. along with that first step like the most obvious step so I teach people how to build an online business yeah they need to get online they need a website yeah right so the very the, the very first step is to okay sign up for a hosting account and here's the one I recommend here's a video for it about how to use it and go through it exactly and that way it's not scary anymore um, other programs I mean you can get 50% to I've even seen some affiliate programs where you can get 100% commissions. Wow. Which is like, why would a company give you 100% of the cost? It's because they know that down the road they're gonna sell other things to go along with it or, or, or larger things and, or, or you know, more in-depth programs on top of that. So yeah. ask, that's what you gotta do. And so these products that you use, these companies that you work with already, send them an email, let them know that you have this targeted audience. They're gonna be very, very interested in that. You know, they, I, I, any smart company would prefer a thousand targeted potential customers versus a million randoms where maybe there's gonna be some people or maybe not, right? Yeah. So you have an advantage being a small but highly targeted channel too, which is cool. Um, and then you don't need the thousands or hundred thousands of views in order to start making money through AdSense. You can do it directly by recommending these products that you already recommend. That's so powerful. And, and we'll also, we'll even put some uh, show notes in the description below of some other programs. We've seen in the beauty lifestyle space, our style. Sometimes there's affiliate networks that have multiple different brands within them. Uh, Magic Links is a cool uh, site because once you get approved, you can now sign up for 5,000 retailers. And so if you're a lifestyle channel, whether it's Nordstrom's or Target or DJI for drones, yeah. pretty much everything has an affiliate program. Right, Target has a, uh, so sometimes people complain because they live in a particular state where Amazon doesn't allow them to be an associate, yeah. like Colorado, for example, at least, at least uh, right now. So I just say, okay, well, Target has an affiliate program. Walmart has an affiliate program, right? These things that you normally recommend to like your friends and your audience, you can get a, you can get a kickback for that, which yeah. is pretty cool. And, and yes, it may be only a few dollars here and there, but those things add up. But there are programs out there likely that are much more expensive where you only need to refer a couple people yeah. to make some big differences in, in your income. 
Awesome, I love that. Now, I'm super pumped to talk about YouTube in just a second and some of the strategies and tactics you're doing there. Mm. Um, but you mentioned, well, the first thing you actually started with wasn't affiliate marketing, it was actually products. And as we're trying to help influencers not just build their influence, but also their income, um, what are some of your advice for that? I know I did affiliate marketing first personally, and then we recently created some courses and whatnot, but that can be kind of daunting. Mm -hmm. um, how do you recommend those, besides just building your influence, we're trying to help people build their income, how could products maybe creating something like an ebook, how hard is that and what are your tips? I mean, it's not an overnight thing, right? It does take work, but if you do something that will serve an audience, you will get rewarded for that for sure. So whether it's an ebook or, or an online course or a program of some, of some kind, here's what I would recommend doing. Don't just create something random and then try to sell it and jam your audience in there, right? You want to know that this is something that will sell. So how do you know that? You ask your audience for what their biggest pains, problems, and struggles are. And they will literally tell you, okay, here's the problem. And if you can come up with a solution or the thing that helps them solve that problem, and especially if you can share it in a way that they can resonate, I mean, you're, you're golden, right? Wow. So the cool thing about products that are your own is you're not sharing any of that profit, right, with yeah. the company. Um, but it does take time and it does take uh, some work. But here's what I recommend doing. This is what I teach in my book, Will It Fly? Is that you survey your audience um, and sometimes surveying means, you know, software to collect thousands of responses to understand what the struggles are. But honestly, the best way to do it is to get on a phone call or a Skype call with somebody. I mean, I do this. I have a email list of 200 thousand people and I reach out to at least 10 people on my email list every single month to get on the phone with them and I go hey John like what's going on right now like what are you struggling with what do you wish that I have that I that I don't yet and then these conversations some of them are really short because they're really shy and they're just like wait is this real like yeah. how, like <laughs> why would you reach out to me it's because these conversations sometimes last hours and I can mm -hmm. dig into the deep pains of what these people really need help with and what's stopping them yeah so that I can help them through that. And sometimes that solution is an online course. Sometimes it's just an ebook. Sometimes it's a free link to a thing that I written about in the past that they didn't even know existed. Wow. I'm serving them, right? But over time, you'll start to see that there's commonalities in the problems and struggles that your audience has. Create a product for that. But even before you create it, here's what I would recommend doing. And this is what I teach in my book. Run a beta sale for it, a pre-sale. So even before you create it, and this is a little like weird for some people, they're like, you want me to sell a product I don't even have yet? Yes, yeah. right? And when you think about it, it's like Kickstarter, right? You're paying for stuff before it even exists sometimes. Yeah. Same, same idea. An event that you pay for, you're, you're paying for the tickets, that event happens months later. Same thing with this product. Hey guys, I'm gonna create this solution. Here's what it's gonna be like so that they know exactly what they're getting into. And I'm gonna sell 20 spots, you limit it, but if you can fill out that tw those 20 spots and you tell them, hey, this thing doesn't exist yet, but if I can get 20 people to pay 50 bucks, then I'll know that this is something I will build. And guess what? You're gonna get, you're gonna get it tailor made to you as being an early bird purchaser. I'm gonna make sure it's exactly what you need. And that's great for you because then you're not building something that may be just too much, yeah. right? You're, you're building, you know, most people when they build courses, they're building that universal remote control that has like a thousand buttons on it where we only use like four, right? Yep. You can build the product exactly the way they want it with nothing more and they're gonna feel special. At the end, after they've gone through that and hopefully you've given, given them some kind of result, well then you have these amazing testimonials so that when you launch publicly, it's a full-blown launch with a product that you are confident and can, can, get, can get behind. Um, and you can likely increase the price from there too. Uh, and then you have these real testimonials behind it. And that way, okay, let's, let's say you try this and you don't make any sales. Failure? No. You just knew, you just now know for sure that that's not a product that you should build, Yeah. right? So then you can, okay, try another thing with another sample size of your audience. Which is so great because if it, if it does fail, then you're just able to move on to the next thing. That way you didn't put in all that work right. or whatever. And you probably will learn so much. In the right? process. Because when you have these people who are, maybe they're interested but they don't buy, you can ask them. Okay, you said you were interested, but why didn't you buy? Well, I didn't think it had all the things it needed to have. Well, what does it need to have? What would get you to buy? Data, oh my gosh. feedback, and now you're making your product better. Yes. That's very powerful. Well, influencers, I really want to challenge you. If you haven't started affiliate marketing, great place to start. Even like write down some ideas, video ideas, products right now. And for some of you in the community, maybe you're a little bit further along, 
think about consider creating a product. And you know, one thing I've learned, Pat, was um, I went to Udemy, Skillshare, which is not really hosting your product yourself. It's sometimes shared on a platform. But I looked at products and they don't have to be, sometimes maybe if you've ever taken a course, you're like, geez, that's daunting. It has to be a zillion videos, right. it has to be. But there's some things on there that are 30 minutes, maybe four videos on a topic, how to sew or how to do th these things. And I'm like, whoa, and it'll show you on Udemy, you're like, there's 50 sales of this thing. Yeah. And for a lot of people watching in your niche, you could create that probably like this Saturday. Sometimes it's 101, it's basic. For sure. It like, you know, kind of start small before you like take on a huge academy or something like that. My favorite online course that I ever took was $300, which is a lot. It was by a guy named Michael Hyatt, who I know you know. Yeah. And it was five videos, about 10 minutes each, and that's it. Wow. And it was the best content. It doesn't have to be 100,000 videos or 100,000 hours of videos, right? That's how it used to be. Sure. People just pack in hours of videos. That was their, we have hundreds of hours of videos, like get my thing. Now it's like, I don't want to watch that much stuff. If I can get the content and, and, and get that solution in one hour, that's more beneficial to me. Yeah. And so it doesn't have to be, like Sean was saying, all these videos, it just has to be the right content that'll help them solve their problem. That's really powerful. We're gonna talk about YouTube in just a second, but Pat, are you ready for the lightning round? Let's do it. Boom! Oh, the coffee! It was empty, so I knew that. I knew that. Lightning round, lightning round, lightning round. Three, two, one. Coffee or tea? Coffee, all day. I mean, I guess it's kind of a, that was not a very good uh, lightning round question. <laughs> Book every influencer watching should read that you recommend. The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. Awesome, I love that book. We'll definitely link that up in the description below. Favorite TV show or Netflix show? Stranger Things. Ooh, cat or dog? Dog. Do you have a dog? I have a dog, his name's Gizmo. Favorite social network? Instagram. You know, yeah. you just get to know the real, well, that being said, people can put whatever pictures they want, but Instagram stories. Yeah. I love seeing people's Instagram Instagram's stories. hot, Instagram's fun. Influencers, comment below what's your favorite social network. Favorite documentary or movie that, that you'd recommend for maybe, you know, entrepreneurs, influencers to watch? Tony Robbins had a documentary um, about kind of his work ethic and his program, it was very powerful. I yeah. think a lot of mindset stuff, a lot of the stuff that blocks us from moving forward is mindset stuff. I'm not your guru or yeah, something like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 that's Awesome, great. yeah, check it out. Do you have a hidden talent that, you know, of course we probably wouldn't know, but maybe even your community wouldn't know about? What? That is, how'd you learn how to do that? I'm an only child. <laughs> So am I, and I actually. had to fill out. Is that why we're both weird? Probably. Yeah, I'm an only child as well. Eventually I got some step siblings, but uh, there you go. No miss morning ritual. My five minute journal. Nice. So every morning I write in my five minute journal uh, what I hope to accomplish today and what I'm grateful for. If you could give a TED talk, what would it be about? It would be about how I was able to, I haven't done this yet, but it'll happen, how I was able to be an agent in helping get entrepreneurship on the same level as science, math, and reading in public schools. How has failure or setbacks in your life set you up for future success, and do you have a favorite failure? So let me talk about the failure first and how that helped me. In 2012, I created a software product, and it was because I saw two of my other buddies create a software product too, and they killed it. They made six figures in a couple of days from it. And I said, I need to do the same thing. So I, I hired a developer right away. I didn't even know exactly what I wanted to do. I knew it was gonna be a WordPress plugin. And I spent what was supposed to be $5,000, I actually spent uh, $15,000, and what was supposed to take six weeks took four months and just so much stress. And by the end of it, I had finally the product that I wanted. And the reason why it took so long is because I didn't know for sure even I didn't even know exactly what I wanted, so it was hard for me to tell the developer what, like he was trying to guess, and it was just a lot of back and forth. Finally I had something, I shared it with a couple of my friends, and they were like, meh. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just wasted all this time and money on something. If only I had talked to these people first about this idea, wow. would I have realized that A, this wasn't a good idea, or B, actually the, the worst part about it was my, my friends were like, you know what, that's okay, but what if it did this? What if it did that? What if it did this? And I was like, I don't have any more money to do that yeah. in my budget for this right now. So it was a hard lesson, and that's why I am so gung-ho on getting the validation stuff done up front first. But secondly, and this is the biggest lesson, I realized that a big reason that failed was because I was chasing the money. Mm. I wasn't building that because I wanted to help people. I was building it because I wanted to make money because that had failed. Yeah, ask first, survey your audience first, get that feedback first, that's very powerful. We all know the phrase, if I knew then what I knew now. What advice would you give to your 20-year-old self from what you know now? Young Pat, 
So if I could take the DeLorean back yeah. uh, 30, no, to uh, uh, 13 years ago to when I was 20, um, Actually, I don't even know how old I am anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's 15 years ago. Gosh, yeah. after 30, like all good, like it doesn't matter anymore. I would tell myself to meet and befriend as many people as possible. I was so shy mm. back in the day, and I didn't like meeting new people. It just gave me anxiety. Now I try to meet as many people as I can because every person I meet creates and opens up new opportunities that would have never existed before yeah. that meeting and that relationship. Um, I, was, I, was, I never raised my hand in class. I never wanted to talk to anybody except people who I already knew very well. Um, now, I am, even though I'm an introvert and I still am uncomfortable, I make an effort to go out and reach uh, and, and reach out to people who are cool and, and I just want to get to know them and amazing things have happened as a result of that. I love that. If you could only have one item during a zombie apocalypse, uh, what would it be? It would be an ax. An ax. An ax. Because it's unlimited, you know, blows, right? That's true. And it can help you, uh, so I'm, I'm very much into, so my son likes video games and you know, I'm imagining Fortnite right now and the ax is the, the tool you start with because you can build and you can chop and stuff and so you can make your way through things. So it's both a tool you can use to build and, and, and take things down, but also to chop the heads off of zombies who are trying to eat your brains. You know, well explained. Uh, great backup and justification about your choice. Thank you, and they also uh, talk about on Mythbusters too, so. Respect, and finally, do you have a favorite quote or phrase that you like to think about often? I would rather, and this is a Paflin original actually, yeah. that I share on stage a lot that people resonate with. Um, I'd rather live a life full of oh wells than a life full of what ifs. Wow. You know, those, those what ifs that you take with you to your grave are gonna just haunt you, right? So I'd rather do something and fail and just go, oh well, at least I tried. Yeah. Powerful, powerful stuff. The lightning round. Uh, let's talk about YouTube just briefly. And it's interesting because you're known really as the podcast guy. 55 million downloads. A lot of people look to you as the, to how to build podcasts. In fact, it's not even really a topic of this episode, but definitely follow Pat. And there's a lot of, uh, we'll link his content up below. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, you have so much wisdom there. But now the podcast guy is shifting some more attention to going to YouTube. Why and what is some of your things you've already learned doing it now? Pretty, cons you know, really consistent, putting out shows and doing it. Uh, what have you learned? That's funny, uh, this is the most common question. And so I'm gonna go to, into the origin story of how I got back into YouTube. So initially, my YouTube channel started in 2009. It was just a place to house tutorials for things. Actually, my most popular videos are my podcasting tutorials on how to help people start a podcast. Um, but they were kind of just sitting there and I never really got serious about it. I didn't even understand really how it worked, but somehow I've amassed millions of views just by putting helpful stuff up, right? Yeah. Which is good. But uh, I went to Portugal in September of last year, first time in Europe, and I was like, I need to capture this moment. First time in Europe after how many years of my life? And um, I, I, I bought a camera, actually thanks to you, your recommendation, uh, this, the Sony um, RX100 yep. Mark V. Yep. And I just took that with me and I captured the whole thing and I, I edited a video that I posted on YouTube and people were like, this is so amazing. Like, this is a part of you I've never seen before. Uh, I, it was like I was there with you. Yeah. And I was like, this is so powerful, right? And and the podcast and my blog, they, they're like a machine now, right? To a point where I'm already recorded four months ahead of time. And in, I felt like I got my creative uh, juices flowing again yeah. by getting back onto YouTube. Yeah. So I was like, okay, like this is great. I'm having fun and it's exciting and people are resonating with it. Plus, a lot of my entrepreneur friends uh, who I follow on the podcast and on the blogosphere, they're not doing videos. So I knew that if I could tackle YouTube, I could teach entrepreneurship uh, to people who would likely not find me elsewhere, right? Yeah. And actually, when you look up a lot of the channels in entrepreneurship and, and online business and internet marketing, they're not good videos. True. You know? Yeah. And a lot of them lead to really scammy things and that just doesn't sit well with me. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take stance. I wanna be the one that everybody finds to teach them how to do it the right way. Yeah. And I went to VidSummit, met with Daryl and a number of other amazing people uh, who uh, I told them about this plan and they're like, do it, but here's how you have to do it. And so it was A, I had to commit to it, B, I had to stay consistent, and, and C, you know, I just kind of create great content that answers people's questions. And that's what we did. So um, we've been going five days a week for about a month now, and it's been great. 
and I'm seeing the algorithm start to trigger and, and, and some of my older videos are getting more views now as a result. But more than that, I'm just, I'm just having a lot of fun. That's cool. With it. And, and the big strategy is to, you know, you know, I have these online courses now to experiment and see how YouTube might lead people into those, those courses and programs as well. And specifically tactics, if you were to think like just maybe one or two or three of the actual things that you're doing that you feel like are working. Yeah. So number one, and this is something that I never thought of before, but a lot of you probably know this, is, is how important the hook is mm. for your show because yeah. watch time is everything. Yep. And with a podcast, I mean, you have a minute or two to get people interested until they put that phone in their pocket and they're listening to you, right? On a, on a, on a blog, I mean, you have only a few seconds, but you know, multimedia on a video, you have to capture them or else they're gonna leave, yeah. right? And so I've been working really hard on coming up with strategies to keep people focused. And I, I look into my analytics to see, okay, when, when are the drop-offs happening? Don't do that. <laughs> if I see a big drop off in my analytics for watch time, okay, at that moment, what did I do? Okay, let's not do that again. But I also start to see when things trail off. I start to pattern interrupt. Mm. So in the middle of my videos, I'll do something where it just kind of captures people's attention again. And what's really cool is the things I'm learning on YouTube, I'm now incorporating to my podcast and it's making my podcast wow. even, better, uh, even better too. And then number two, I'm finding popular videos and I'm just taking the approach of, I'm gonna create a better video than that that will get more watch time. That's my goal. Yeah. How can I make a better video than that video that ranks for that keyword that I know my audience is looking for? How do I make a better video than that that's more engaging, that has higher watch time? That's powerful. I, I think I heard about on blogging something called the skyscraper method. Yeah, uh, about, Brian Dean. Yeah, about creating, you look at what's ranking on the first page of Google and try to say, how do I make a more valuable, maybe longer form, yeah. but it's like more content rich blog post. Right, how do I build a bigger skyscraper? And so it's kind of, that's that approach on YouTube, looking at kind of what's out there and think, it might also be a couple years old. Yeah. So you can, you can like, I can just do this, but add just fresh information, maybe make it a little tighter. Is that kind of your approach? Yes, and then I'm starting to see that my videos that are new about those things are being, you know, suggested in, in those older videos now. So I'm starting to see traffic pick up that way too. That's powerful. Well, uh, Pat, I want to ask you, thanks so much for coming on uh, the show and uh, I want to talk about your links but even one last question here because you mentioned Will It Fly and it's such a great book um, and what's some watching actually have not started their channel yet some of the people in our community they're still doing research they're still dreaming and some are also maybe they've started their channel but they're wondering will their product fly will their thing talk a little bit about that of course we'll put a link to Pat's book um, such a good tool for people at different stages wouldn't you say for sure yeah I mean if you're just starting out you want to make sure that the direction you're going is the right direction and that, that there's two parts to that there's okay product to market fit or idea to market fit but there's also idea to you fit you know mm. I know a lot of people who are successful entrepreneurs on paper Paper, but then when you talk to them and you get real, I mean, they're like, you know, I'm making money, but I'm not happy. And I'm like, really? You're an entrepreneur. You can choose any direction you want to go and you're not happy. Why? Yeah. It's because they either took that first opportunity just because it was available. They didn't think about what they wanted their life to be like five years from now. And so matching where you want to go with what you need to do now is really, really important. Um, but then for people who have a business already or have an audience, I mean, it's going into that audience and like we talked about earlier, surveying them, having conversations with them, finding which solution you should create next, and then validating that that's actually what they want. Because it's one thing for them to say, yeah, I totally buy that. Yeah. But it's the second thing to say, yes, I will buy it. Here's my, I, I'll, here's my money because I want it now. So true. Very cool. We'll definitely check it out, especially if some of that resonated with you. I think it would be a great tool leading you through frameworks and, and, and interactive to really get clarity on some of your own ideas, your own projects. But additionally, besides the book, we, of course, we'll link everything up. What, where are you at online and what should people check out and some things that you have to help people with everything we talked about and more? Sure. So there's the YouTube channel, obviously, youtube.com slash smartpassiveincome. Uh, smartpassiveincome.com is where a lot of the other things um, are happening. And on social media, usually at Pat Flynn. Instagram, Twitter, etc. I love it. And and Pat, could you just share one final thought for influencers watching? You know, one of, as you know, like both of us have been through this. Anyone who's done this knows it gets hard. Yeah. It is definitely a, what people see online is the highlight reel, but there's so much blooper reel behind the scenes, <laughs> and there's also a lot of discouragement. I mean, it's an emotional roller coaster being kind of an entrepreneur and stepping out there, and there's a lot of just going through it. So some people might be on a high right now. There's others that might be on a low. What would you just kind of a few words of encouragement for influencers watching to just keep going, keep building towards their dream and to press through those setbacks and those discouraging moments? Yeah, I think when you're in the grind, it's really easy to 
forget why you're doing this in the first place. So I always try to recommend for people to remember, like, why did you even get excited about this in the first place? What got you stoked about doing this work? Mm. And just that thought alone is great to just check in with yourself on every once in a while, because then you'll be like, oh yeah, this is why I'm working so hard, or this is why I'm staying up so late, or this is why I'm struggling right now, so that I can, whatever that is. And you need to know what that is, right? Yeah. It's like putting the address in the navigation. Unless you do that, you're going to be driving around, working hard, but you're going you're gonna to lose your gas. Or if you're driving an electric car, your energy. Pat, thank you so much for being on the show. Influencers, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And actually, we did a video, Pat and I did, over on his channel. So just click or tap the screen right there if you want to check that out. If you want to see another video from Video Influencers, just click and tap the screen right there. Until next time, Video Influencers is helping you build your influence, income, and impact with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.